Hello, everybody. I'm here today with Stefan Orlov, the owner of Bizmetrics. It's a boutique marketing firm and consulting firm serving the GTA and Durham region. Their mission is to help you unlock the potential of your business. Bizmetrics and Stefan, of course, has a deep understanding of the unique needs of small businesses and how to succeed in today's challenging environments. They're going to help you get the solutions you need to grow your business. Some of the skills and some of the Services they work on are like marketing, uh, business plans and funding, business development, content and digital services, uh, lead generation and management, and strategic planning. I read that list out because not all our listeners have access to looking at what we have on our screen, but so that they know um, what the types of services that you have. Stefan, I'd love to just take it over to you if you would um, tell people a little bit about Bizmetrics and what inspired you to start your own business and a little bit about your background because you know, there's a wealth of knowledge that you have to share with people, and I and I know that you love to help businesses. So welcome. Well, first off, uh, thank you, uh, Teresa. Appreciate uh, the warm welcome, and it is a pleasure to be able to support BACD and the wonderful work that you do for small business uh, in the Durham region. Thank you. Uh, Bizmetrics has been uh, around for a little bit over a decade now, and we specialize in helping those small businesses start and grow their business. And the key is really marketing. Marketing right. is often misunderstood and can be a very transformational way to create success uh, in business. Uh, my background has been always in sales and marketing. I really enjoy uh, being able to provide uh, that kind of support, a different perspective, so to speak, uh, mm -hmm. for business. Very I nice. cut my teeth uh, many years ago with uh, big corporations, uh, both in Canada and globally, such as Sony, Fujifilm, Walters Kluwer, and so forth. And I really brought a lot of you know, learning inside of me to be able to share that. Big companies have big budgets, but they also are slow to react. So right. small business really has the ability to be nimble and act quickly. So they can get a website up and running in a matter of days, as opposed to months that yeah. a big company would, would have. And yeah. what I would really start off with saying is it's very important to have marketing as the center of your overall business strategy, because if you know who your customer is, who your prospect is, and what their problem is, what their pain point, what you can do to help them, if that is clear, then you will be able to provide them a compelling offer, connect with them and do business together right. as opposed to trying to sell benefits. Right. Very cool. And I know a lot of clients struggle with that when they first start out is really understanding, you know, what is the problem they're solving and what is the target market they're serving? So, and that's something you can help them with, right? Is really getting clear with that. You must take them through some exercises, I would imagine. Uh, absolutely. I mean, the, the, the center is really that strategic piece is to have a strong foundation. With that strong foundation, you can do many things. The doors open up actually for small business. Uh, as you know, the statistics are not very flattering on the number of businesses that fail um, yeah. after one year, two years and five years. So what we really want to do is give them the success formula to help them and support them to have that strong foundation and to be able to have a clear objective in mind in order to create success for their business. Right. Um, I see one of the things you offer is business plans and funding. So do you help people actually write the whole business plan? They come to you with just some ideas and then you pull that all out of them? Yes, we do, Teresa. Uh, we offer kind of two ways. One is a little bit self-serve or guided where yeah. they would have uh, a very in-depth template, the one that we use internally ourselves, yeah. to be able to create that business plan on their own. Okay. The reality is though, a proper business plan, especially that is going to need the support of the bank uh, or BDC or one of the government programs, really needs to have all the bases covered. And it can often be hundreds of hours worth of research and skill that is required in order to create that successful plan. So we can do it all for the entrepreneur as well. And I agree with you. Coordinate with uh, the bank or the funder in order to mm -hmm. actually close the deal. 
Right. Um, I know here at BACD, we don't write anybody's business plans. We give them to people like you because our job is really to teach the entrepreneur to do the work. And if the entrepreneur doesn't want to, it's not that they don't want to necessarily, but if it's not something that they can do or they don't have the time, then we love to send them to people like you because we can edit business plans, but the volume of work, it's just not the thing that we can do. So we love that we have you on our expert network to be able to do that. Thank you. So question for you, you were in big corporate business for a long time. And uh, then what made you decide it's time to, what inspired you and what said, it's time for me to start my own business? Well, I was actually off, I'd, I'd broken my arm and uh, was, was at home being a little stir crazy from uh, big corporate life. And um, a few people suggested that I maybe do some consulting work. Right. And I, I did that and it really kind of struck a chord with me and encouraged me to uh, strike out on my own and to actually put a lot of those learnings that I had gathered with uh, the big corporates globally uh, to work locally. Right. And then that's, and, and how did you know that your service would even be needed from that? Well, my, my first one was actually for um, an electronics chain uh, that is now uh, owned by Best Buy. Okay. And, um, it was a program that really um, electronics retailers generally have one or two brands that they prefer to support. Right. And I developed a pivot table, which is really a three dimensional Excel sheet. And it uh, provided a, an ability to put in a, a subjective sales amount and each of the different brands back end programs. So the co-op allowance advertising and so forth okay. that helped guide them in order to decide from a profitability standpoint, uh, which program and which brand to support based on bottom line. And traditionally, they've always done that on a manual calculation. And I developed that pivot table so it can just be used uh, over and over again, put in the different variables and presto, it, it works automatically on its own. That's excellent. They must have loved you for that because that would have- Yeah, that, that, that's stores. what really started the whole process. And uh, that's where I started to get in and provide specific solutions that were geared at that point, obviously to the big companies, but I shifted that to provide the support for the small companies from the strategic and foundational standpoint. Yeah. Um, question for me, you, you say that marketing is a must have in business today. What, tell us a little about uh, why you think that's so. Well, uh, st statistics actually show that, that marketing is, is one of the key uh, reasons businesses fail. Uh, right. Most people think it's actually funding or money issues, which uh, is tied in that whole regard. But mm -hmm. if you don't have a clear picture of your business and who you're serving, it's going to be very difficult to actually create a sustained and profitable business. Right. And often what happens is you race to the bottom on price. Yeah. And that is a race to the bottom, unfortunately. Yeah. And, and that's really, I, I, I tell my clients that you want to avoid that at all costs. Right. What you want to do is to be different. You don't necessarily have to have a better mousetrap. You just need to have a different one. And the different one starts with the ability to actually connect with your audience. Right. Rather than saying, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. Benefit selling is you're actually listening and identifying what their specific needs and pain points are. Because right. if you help someone solve their problem, they will run to you. They will tell everyone else about you. But right. if you're saying, I can do this differently, I can do that better, then it's, well, what's your price? Yeah. Then it's, the only thing you have left is to compete on price, which again, right. race to the bottom. Yeah. So if you can avoid the price discussion until later, the longer it gets postponed, the less likely it becomes a deciding factor. Oh, that's a good point. Very and good many, point. Many businesses think... They've got someone who's interested. Let's give them a, a low ball price point and secure that sale right away. Right. And all you do is give your money away, your profit. Very good point. Um, one of the other things you've mentioned is business development. How do you help a business with that? Like what's the process that you go through to help them with that? Well, business development encompasses many different areas. So it's not yeah. just marketing or advertising or operations or administration. It's really to be able to make sure that all of the resources are available to have that single-minded focus on what's important for that particular business. 
right. you actually start that conversation with the business owner to actually suggest to them that they and their business is the single most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. They will often say, no, it's the client. And it, it is actually. However, when you're starting your business and creating that menu of options, you really need to know what you're going to be doing and how you're going to deliver it. Best to have a clearly defined box for that. And then you know how to connect to your audience rather than trying to be all things to all people. Good point. Uh, we used we have a, a saying here when someone says to us, "Who's your, when we ask them who's your target market?" They go, "Everybody." We go, "That's the kiss of death," because it's never everybody. Correct, and unless you have a big budget, the internet is billions. Yes. So if you're going to reach them, even at a very low cost per, it's still going to be a huge amount of money. Good much point. much better to have a clear understanding about who you can really help best and then where the audience resides and connect right. with them there. Right, very good point, for sure. So uh, many times people get very scared by the words uh, strategic planning. T dumb that down for us or make it, make it simple. Well, strategic and planning are, are scary words in the small business world and community. And I actually think it is a fantastic opportunity because what it does is lets the entrepreneur tell their story. Right. And with that story, you highlight keywords, key phrases, uh, specific deliverables that they can have, and then you frame it all together in order to create the right messaging that is going to target the right audience. I love that. That's really what's never heard it that way before. Is to have an understanding about where you are, and where you're going, and how to get there. I've never and heard it explained that way before. I like it. I like it. Very nice. So another question I have for you, and with all the businesses you've worked with, do you think there's a pattern or formula for entrepreneurs to be successful? I think most uh, businesses have the potential to be very successful. Yeah. The key is, is whether or not the idea is fully committed. Okay. Okay. And by committed, I mean is that often, um, Ideas are incubated very well, but they're not necessarily put into place effectively because okay. you have to think what the business is going to look like in three months, six months, three years, and down the road. And what the objectives are that you want to receive from the business. Yeah. So often the, the, the view that entrepreneurs take is too short term or too okay. long term, depending on what it is that they're actually in that planning process for. So that goes back to the strategic plan to have an understanding about where you are, what resources are available, and how you can invest and grow your business is really important. Very, very cool. So I like that. So having a bit of a, a plan, right? And, and having a plan that, well, strategic means long-term to some degree and, and well thought out, right? You've thought about this plan. So I like that. What and do you think, sorry, you were gonna say something? One of the pitfalls is, is that if you go on the internet, which has, a lot of information available there are, are many points of view that would say don't think about something too long get out and execute and th there is of course some validity in having the ability to go out and deliver and connect with your audience but i think it's very important to have an understanding about where you are today and and what steps you wanted to take because it allows you to measure and compare and without that measurement and comparison it becomes more difficult you have many, many challenges as an entrepreneur. Are you really going to remember everything you did today, last week, last month, and have the ability to adjust on that in a way that your bottom line isn't going to be uh, sacrificed? Very true. Have you ever turned down a client? Absolutely. Yeah. It's very I important to have the right fit, yeah. both for us and for the client. Yeah. We can't be everything to everybody. We do excellent work and we enjoy what we do, but we're not going to be able to satisfy every particular business needs. Right. Very true. What do you see as the coming trends in marketing and, and like kind of in the field that you're in and helping businesses with, you know, what's, what's going to be challenges for businesses? Uh, I, I think one of the trends is actually uh, incorporating a little bit back to the basics to okay. have the ability to have that solid understanding and foundation 
yeah. and not just focus on uh, a particular social media platform or a methodology that everyone's buzzing about because right. business is going to be made up of different parts. And I think a little bit of what we could call old school or traditional or non-digital uh, combined with um, uh, the the digital mar market the digital marketing tools the different kinds of platforms that you can have making sure that there's the right fit and that connects to the audience in the way that they want to good point things are also going to be a little bit more visual so while you want to have a strong basic quality platform or that foundation you also want to make sure that you have a visual story to tell mm -hmm. and that can be delivered by a digital platform that especially younger um, entrepreneurs are are really focused on right right good point so i think video you i think video right visual storytelling vi visual video is going to be yes. a big deal but you are right i also think that those traditional ways of connecting with people are still important we're, we're going back to some of that we're getting fatigued with all the platforms and all the digital bells and whistles and people are very interested in receiving a card in the mail or meeting with someone for lunch or me meeting at a networking event I, you know, and I, I agree with you there. I have another question for you. Um, what do you think the top three skills uh, are necessary for an entrepreneur today? That's, a, that's an interesting question because I think that can have a different answer depending on what type of business they want to be in. Yeah, fair I, enough. I think a vision is very important. Yes. Uh, for the entrepreneur to have so that they are able to see ahead of what's happening today long term. Yeah. I also think that they need to have dedication. Yeah. Because it, it's going to be very, very challenging, especially if they've been going from a nine to five job to now going to what I could call even a 25 eight job. <laughs> yeah. As an entrepreneur, you are going to be working long hours for, in many cases, a little pay. And there's no peace for the wicked if we get yep. on uh, for that. And I also think you need to have um, the ability to let go in the right circumstance. So that's a risk issue that uh, needs to be uh, clearly understood and manageable by the entrepreneur. Right. So a good it's point. I'm going to wrap those up. Vision, dedication, and the ability to let go and delegate. Really That's correct. Important. Based on the risk tolerance that they right. set beforehand. Get, kind of like get out of your own way. Right? Yes. Right. Awesome. And it's, it also speaks to so many uh, entrepreneurs, you know, are they working in the business or at the business? Right. right? On the business. Well, how, how do you really want to, to look at that? Because you can't do everything. You might have to do a lot at the beginning. The sooner you can hand off some of those critical that you don't have a high skill set in, the more success you will be able to create sooner. That's so true. And you know, I'll say this, that I think lots of business owners struggle with that. They struggle that they cannot let go, but it is totally freeing and pivotal for their business to let go if they can. Yeah, we are often engaged with businesses that um, run into a situation that we call plateauing. They've actually done a really good job of establishing their business and growing it to a certain point, but now they run out of the single most valuable commodity they have. It's That's not them. money, it's time. Yeah. And they did great follow-up on the way up while they were growing, but now they're trying to do too many things and things are falling apart. Right. And as you plateau, as that good, you start almost going into a free fall and the business can really fall apart very quickly and throwing money at it may not necessarily be able to solve it. It's the ability to know what went wrong and take that step back and create the corrective action, which is often delegating it, okay? Business owners are often very good at what they do, but they're not legal, they're not HR, they're not accountants, and they're not marketers in, in virtually every one of those cases. So the sooner you can bring the pros in to help manage, it actually increases the control because someone else is accountable and you can ask the right pointed question to keep their feet to the fire and your business growing. Very cool. So that's very true. Great advice. Um, another question I have for you, what activities do you recommend entrepreneurs invest their time in? I think they should be spending some time to have an understanding about 
uh, where their future lies in that particular industry. Right. And I also think that they should take a little bit of a break because they need to be able to be fresh for business. Every day is going to have a new challenge and every day is a learning opportunity for them. And right. if they can take a little bit away from that, then that will keep them refreshed. If you only immersed in your business all the time, it's going to become a little more tedious. And more importantly, you may miss some of the nuances that are occurring out there because you're so focused on trying to capture every detail. Right. Now, Good point. You need some time. You know, get, get many different feeds. Absolutely. But you don't need to be reading constantly. You also need to be able to take, you know, that 30,000 foot plateau view and say, you know, what is, what's important right now and how does it connect to my business objectives so that my business will be successful. Very good point. I love that for sure. Um, tell me, who's been your greatest inspiration for you and your business? Actually, my grandfather. Um, he, he made a saying for me that was very, um, you know, inspirational and has stuck with me to this day. And that is who you know gets you there. What you know keeps you there. Very and cool. It's very true, especially in today's global economy. So if you can connect with many people and have great relationships and, and have a wide network, it's fantastic. And right. there's nothing wrong with leveraging that. So if you can get an introduction to someone to either uh, secure an opportunity, to gain an appointment, fantastic. It's also important though to make sure that you know the particular prospect or customer's needs so that you will make that good impression and not just ride on the coattails of someone else. Very the good. reality is if you quote. don't follow up on that uh, introduction properly, you won't be getting another one. So Very good point. So who you know can get you there and, and build out that relationship. It's, uh, it's very important to have that quality network and also work on making sure that you can deliver on what your promise is. Really, really important. Very, very true. Um, another question, Avi, are you a reader? Yes. I have a sense that you are, yes. Do you have a favorite business-related book that you'd love to share with everybody? I, I do, actually. Uh, it's this one here that's called Get Back in the Box. Oh, I'm, is it new? By Douglas Rushkoff. And th there's a lot of buzz out there that, you know, everyone should get out of the box, think outside of the box. But it's also important in your business to define that box because right. that's the space that you're in. So he gives a lot of different views in order to be able to um, confine your thinking to what's relevant for your business opportunity. Again, right. it's to the point you made earlier, your marketplace cannot be the whole world. It cannot be everyone on the internet because it's just too big and you don't have the resources to manage it. So it's a really interesting read. It's been around for a few years, but okay. it has some excellent tips that are still relevant today. Well, I'm going to definitely get that because, and I'll link to it in the show notes as well. So everybody has it. I'll send you some info on it so you can put it up. Great. That'd be great. Thank you. Now, just to wrap up, um, are there any particular questions you want me to answer or to ask for you? Well, okay. I, I wanted to take this opportunity to, uh, again, compliment you on the wonderful uh, role that you and your team are doing in the Durham business community. Um, Thank you business is really the backbone. Small business is the backbone yes. of the um, Canadian economy with over 90% of that GDP really being linked to small business. And having worked with a, a variety of different organizations, I can tell you that uh, you and your team are different. And it's uh, really an, an honor and a pleasure to work with your team. Thank and to you. know that when uh, those entrepreneurs have access to not just the requisite information, but also good guidance and advice. So it's, it's really fun having worked with you uh, in the past, and I look forward to doing that uh, in the future. Uh, what I would ask is that, uh, are you having any specific uh, goals and changes uh, to your organization based on uh, the current situation? Because 
Some of your funding is available uh, from the government and uh, governments are all facing budgetary issues. So is there something right. you might be able to share with me uh, in that regard? Or yeah, sure. That? I could, I'd be happy to share it. Um, we had our budget cut by 40% this year. And so what we have done is start to be a revenue generating organization. So I come from a long background of sales, marketing and operations. And so I'm pivoting BACD to be uh, a resource for businesses, but not everything can be for free, unfortunately. And there are costs to some of the services that we provide and the events that we provide. We still want to be that go-to resource for businesses. I think you can still get a really solid foundation of knowledge from us, knowledge, passion, caring, and understanding from us. We've all been in businesses ourselves. Our advisors here have all been in their own businesses. So we share and, and walk alongside our clients in that journey. But, you know, like any business, we have to make money. And uh, we are a not-for-profit, so sure, we don't need to be, at this point, we are funded by the government, and uh, we can also raise some additional dollars on our own. So, you know, we raise that through sponsorship, we rent our boardroom out, we have events. So at this point, it's mostly workshops and events that we charge money for. We, down the road, we might start charging for our services, but I think it's more specific. It's services like if you want to register your domain, if you want to have us create your Facebook platform for you. So it's very specific services. The advisory services are still complementary. Yeah, that's a, it's, it's a good point. And we've found that when an entrepreneur is, is vested, meaning they've also contributed some uh, skin in the game, which yeah. is the, uh, the hard earned money from their bank account, uh, you often will get uh, better results. I know that when we have put on seminars to uh, some of our um, uh, prospects, when we charge for it, we usually get a little bit less of a turnout in terms of registrations, but a much higher and more committed audience that are actually ready to learn, ready to take it in and to act on it, right. as opposed to it's a free one. And I have the intention of going, but gee, this morning the weather's bad or the, the little one's got a cough and uh, uh, it's okay. I didn't pay anything so I can afford, I'll do the next one. That's so true. That's always been a challenge for our industry, our yes. network, because there's 53 of us in this network is that just because it's for free doesn't mean that there's no value. And so that's been a challenge for our network to overcome. And some of the ways that we are overcoming that is by putting a value on it. It's still a not-for-profit value, but it is a value that we're adding to it. And I think people need to be ready to invest in themselves and their business and, and it takes money. And you know, our services might be no cost, but they are of a cost to our economy and they, and our government is paying it. And those dollars are coming from taxpayers at the end of the day. So, you know, it's not services we want to waste. I'm very thankful that I get to work and serve with entrepreneurs every day. And I'm thankful that Canada actually has these kinds of networks that can help because I lived in other countries and we didn't have anything like this. So, you know, I think it's a, it's a great service that people can use to their own benefit to grow their business. When you know better, you do better. Yeah, and as I, I said at the beginning, you, you've got an excellent team there and access to lots of resources. And frankly, I'm sometimes surprised that the entrepreneurs don't work on it a little bit uh, harder because th they'll join a networking group or do some other things where it costs some money yeah, and they don't yeah. get the same return. But they have the resource with you and your team and to meet other like-minded uh, business owners. It's amazing what can come of that if there's a good uh, strategy behind that. Right. There's a nice buzzword again from today's conversation. Right. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking at things at BACD all the time. I'm always looking at, you know, the measurement of how did we do? Um, if we bring new programs in and new services, how are they doing? What do we take away? What do we add? Because we've also got a finite amount of time and resources. So we've got to be able to serve as many people as possible. Uh, the challenge is we have the whole of the Durham region to look after. You know, it's a, a thousand square kilometers. It's a big, big, a big area, big geographical area. Anyway, you know what? It, it is exciting for us. It makes us come to work every day. We're like my team. I think they're 
amazing people and I'm very fortunate to work with them. So, but I am fortunate to work with people like you too. You've always been a supporter of ours. I mean, I, met, I remember meeting you probably about six years ago now, even five years ago in uh, the Kawartha Lakes. You were at an event there and uh, you know, we stayed connected through the years last year. The organization you're with, uh, the Durham Networking Association where you network, um, sponsored our pitch to win. So one of the winners got a free event, uh, sorry, a free membership. Plus they made some money out of it, which was wonderful. So I really appreciate your support as well of our organization. It takes people like you, you know, to be part of our ecosystem and to help businesses. Yeah, it was, it was our pleasure. And uh, actually that particular participant who won that award is actually a continuing member with us and uh, is growing fantastically. So it is a great success story again that the roots started with you and your team yes and we're happy to continue to support her with uh making additional connections in the community and that's what durham networking association does and i'm also proud to be a member and supporting that organization as well in durham thank you i really appreciate it and i thank you for your time i know you have to run but i really appreciate your time and then we had a chance to chat today and uh look forward to our audience connecting with you so thanks for your time. Thank you again, Teresa.